In this tutorial, we are going to build, uh, we're going to begin to build rather, our actual invoice form. The actual form that uh, an employee would use when a customer uh, comes up to the counter to purchase something. So we've created our invoice table and our invoice details table, which I'm going to close now. And then I'm just going to highlight my invoice table too and go up to create. And I'm going to select form wizard. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to have my invoice number show up and I'm going to select my invoice ID from my invoice table. So I've got my invoice uh, table two selected. So I'm going to select that. I'm also going to want the date of my sale, the employee ID and my customer ID. So the top portion of my invoice will show exactly what we had designed here. Okay. And we will select uh, next, we're going to go to the product name. Uh, and this we're going to get from our invoice details table that we created. Here's my product name, and I will select that. <clears throat> and we're also going to want our quantity, and we'll select that. Uh, the next thing we're going to want, or the last thing rather, is we're going to want the retail price of the item. So we can find that, if you recall, from our item master table. And we've got retail here, and we'll select that. So this should pretty much complete everything initially that we're going to want on our form. So again, we've got our invoice number, our date of sale. We can choose the employee. We can choose our customer, what it is that they're buying, the quantity of items that they're buying, and the retail price. So we'll select next. And this is sort of a little preview of what your invoice will look like. So you can see we've got the product name, quantity, and retail price sort of in this uh, little box here. And this is called a subform. And we can see down here that access is actually defaulted it. Uh, with the uh, form with subforms. And then across the top of our invoice is the invoice ID, date, sale, employee, and customer. Uh, and again, this is all coming from uh, the invoice table that we created. And this was the whole idea behind the design. So let's select next. We're going to want to have it in uh, data sheet view. And we're going to call this, uh, we can name it, uh, for example, our, our company name. You can use your last name. And electronics, electronics Inc. for our fictitious form, and you can see uh, that it's automatically going to create a subform. So when I select finish here, you're going to see this invoice form show up, our electronics Inc. And then you'll also see this invoice details table two subform populate as well, which is going to become uh, very important as we start to expand on our invoice form. So let's finish that. And now you can see we've got everything sort of uh, outlined here. Here's our invoice, invoice ID, the date of sale, employee. So let's try this out. Hit tab. You can see now our, our calendar appears here. Pick a date. Select our employee. We can see that um, everything is populated as we, uh, as we selected. We'll choose our customer. What kind of product are they buying? Now, let's say customers doing some Christmas shopping and they're buying two. Well, you can see we've got a little bit of a problem here. While we have the actual retail price, we're going to need another area in our invoice to actually calculate the entire quantity. So first of all, I want to make some room for that. So we will go into layout view. And I'm just going to drag this over a bit just to give us a little bit of room here for an additional field. Go back to form view. We will save it and we'll close this for now. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to build a formula for that uh, in our invoice details subform. So we'll pull this up and go into design view. And what I want to do is I'm going to want to make some room just below uh, my box here where it says retail. So I'm going to grab this. You can see our form footer. There's a solid line on the bottom and sort of an invisible line at the top here. This is the one when I get my uh, cursor looking like that. I want to left click and hold down the button. And let's just drag this down a little bit. And now we've got some room here. So now we want to add that field in. So go to our design tab. And over here we're going to select our text box. And we're just going to click under here. Oops. Here we are. Just add that in here. 
So the box on the left is where we'll put our description, and then this unbound box is where we're actually going to put our formula. So let's go in here first, and we will call this uh, total items. Okay, and we want to go over here to our property sheet. And if you don't have that visible, if you got blank like this, just go. Um, up here into your menu and you see where it says property sheet, select that and this will pop up for you. And then we want to click on the all tab and we want to be very careful of our naming conventions here and we want to name this text total items. Okay, and then we go to our data tab to actually put in our, um, put in our, whoops, we got to go over here, we got to select the unbound box first and what we want to do here, first of all, is we want to put in the name total items amount. This is really important in how you name this because as we link these cells into our invoice form, <clears throat> we're going to want to know, we're going to want to be able to differentiate between which fields have a dollar amount versus which fields are just text. Because that, you know, if we select the wrong field, we're not going to get the results we want. And now we'll go in here and we will create the formula just by hitting these three little uh, drop downs here. And what we want here is we just want to have equals the sum of, no, pardon me, we just want our quantity times our retail. Yeah, just a real simple formula. Okay, so your expression category should show up here, and we want to multiply the quantity by retail. Select OK. And then we want to format that as currency. Okay. And I always like, before I do anything, I like to, uh, whoops, go in and save this. Any changes that I make, and close it. And let's go back to our invoice form now. And you can see that it's populated here. So I can adjust some of my column widths here. Great. Now let's see if this, uh, how this continues to work. So I'll just tab over. Select another product. Now let's try something from Apple. Let's say it's a keyboard. Let's say we're going to buy four of those. Okay, so it appears everything is functioning properly, which is great. I'm going to stop here, and then on the final uh, segment in this tutorial, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have some fields down here that will calculate the subtotal of all my items, plus our tax, or HST, and then our total. So we will see you on the next video shortly.